back live. Welcome to the Nixus podcast. I'm Melanie Nix, and today I am with Mindy from Dying Oath. Welcome, Mindy. Hey, hey. thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Um, we don't know if we're going to have pop-up visitors, so if any of the guys show up at one point, they show up at one point. <laughs> How was music introduced to you? Um, I grew up in a musical family, actually. Um, my mom was a vocalist. My grandmother was a vocalist. My, both of my aunts were vocalists. Hey, Ryan. Um, so I, I kind of got it honest. You know, it's just something I've been around my entire life. So something I've always enjoyed and felt comfortable to me. Very cool. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> Welcome. Sorry You're just, just, just starting. All right. <laughs> Um, let's start ahead with you two then. How was music introduced to you? Um, well, my mom uh, used to blast the radio all the time, you know, ACDC, Metallica, uh, a lot of the classic heavy metal and things like that, rock and roll. And it, it over the years, between uh, growing up with that and then finding my own favorites like Slipknot when I was 10, 11, 12 at a birthday party and then Bullet from my Valentine by 13, 14, Children of Bowdoin onward from there. So music has been in you guys' lives like forever, basically. Like it's always been something that influenced you. Oh, yeah. For sure. How did you guys learn to play instruments, uh, write songs? It's just something that happened, or did you have to work at it? Uh, my friend ended up leaving uh, his first act guitar at my house for uh, like six months because this is back in the day before social media really took off and everything. So he left that guitar and I kept fiddling with it up until I finally got my first guitar, which was a Jackson RR3 Rhodes. And uh, I was copying Matt Tuck from Bullet from My Valentine pretty much. <laughs> um, <laughs> For me, I think it kind of started out as like, um, I used to keep journals and write everything down and I started doing poetry and things like that. And um, I actually used to be a bassist. I was a bassist for 10 years and um, I ended up doing that uh, because these guys I knew in my class at the time were like, hey, we're looking for a bassist. So I went out and bought a bass and tried to learn it and uh, eventually ended up being really good at it. And then um, I was doing backup uh, vocals in that band while I was a bassist and I heard of this other band after that band split up um, that wanted to audition me for vocals and I was terrified I had no idea if I could even do it because I'd done backup vocals for so long and uh, it ended up kind of being my my niche <laughs> so here I am <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the story behind the band name dying oath well that's that's kind of funny. Um, I wasn't in the band at the time, so Rhino could probably tell you the story a little bit better. But I think they were just kind of looking for for names that fit and that weren't already taken. And this kind of was both. So everybody kind of adopted their own uh, like meaning behind it. And, uh, for, for, at least in Josh before this band, like uh give or take three four years uh, maybe longer it's been a while now but eventually it came together as a bunch of friends that uh were like yeah we want to play music we want to do something fun with our time and uh the first name which god i can't remember now like just wasn't cutting it and we gave ourselves a choice like between like three or four and dying oath ultimately was the winner for some it was like uh, all those years we played, we never gave up. So a dying oath, if you will. Cool. What's up, Matt? We got Matt, Matt. Got anger overdose, repping right here too. What's up? <laughs> awesome people. And we have Jesse. Nice, great job, Mindy Jackson. Crazy proud of y'all. Hey, thanks, Jesse. Love you. Appreciate it. If you guys have any questions for them, just write it up in the comments, and we will get to them. What's your background? Uh, what brought the band together? Well, like Ryan said, I think, uh, you know, he and Josh and some early members just kind of got together and wanted to play music on the weekends. And then 
I came along and kind of kicked it into high gear and was like, you know, I think we're good enough that we can actually go out and play shows and do stuff like that. Because before that we were just kind of drinking beers and playing in an old trailer that didn't even have power. You know, we were just hanging out and we loved each other's company and we all became best friends. And then we played our first show and the rest is kind of history. Like it took off like a roller coaster and we're just kind of trying to hold on now at this point. Right. Just write it out. Just, Going, guys, like, once it gets going, just don't stop the momentum. I've been in the indie community now since early March. I started the podcast in January, uh, but I decided really to say, like, let's go into really now we're booked for September. So, good job. Indie bands are like responding very well. We're having, I'm having a lot of fun. And uh, I've been following everybody, and it's crazy the journey everybody's going through. Um, Absolutely. I think uh, anybody that's in the media or music world right now, everything's a roller coaster, to be honest. Yes, well, after COVID, I mean, um, uh, we're, we're just really getting back into the swing of things, going back into, you know, going into shows and we're what two years i don't know for you guys but up in canada there in montreal it was pretty much like two or three years i think we didn't we couldn't do anything so. yeah it was about two years for us too to where everything was just kind of up in the air so we're just happy to be able to to play music and do shows again like that's a huge gift every day absolutely did you say music and art is very important to society absolutely i mean i think that it heals people. To be honest, I think that it's kind of like one way that everybody connects and it translates to everybody, no matter what gender you are or what you believe in or, you know, where you live or what you look like, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's universal and it's something that helps people get through anger and sadness and happiness and all the things in the world. Absolutely. We had a mental health week. And everybody was saying music is out as an outlet, whether you're listening to it, playing it, writing it. And uh, we've had a lot of tough subjects and uh, there was always a song. There was always, the artist would always tell me, well, this song is related to. So it is very, very important. Um, just like it's important for the kids. Um, they like to say that they're going to cut the art programs and music programs for the kids, which I think would be very detrimental to them. Hey, thank you, Sean. And thank you, Sarah. Hope to get out to Tennessee as well, Sean. How did music help your life? Like, we all know music is important. But is there something that music has ever done for you that would nothing else in the world could have done? Well, you know, I speak for myself, but I think I also speak for everybody in the band when I say this. I think that we all kind of benefit individually through music as far as, you know, going through the hard times and, you know, celebrating the good times. It's kind of everything in between and it's helped us. But, you know, I also think that this band in general, you know, this is not only our outlet, but this is kind of our saving grace sometimes, you know, Rhino and I, we've, we've been through a lot of tough times together in this band and as well as everybody else in the band. And it's kind of been the way to, to keep going, to keep us motivated, to give us something to look forward to, you know, to lift us up when we don't have anything else because we are a family, but the music itself is something that's really just catered to every feeling that we've had, I think in general. I saw that cute little puppy over there. <laughs> it's adorable. I don't know which one is adorable, him or the dog. <laughs> what are the plans for the coming months? Well, um, we just released the single Ascension, of course, and uh, we've just kind of been promoting that. But we are working on new music. Uh, we've just been in the studio this past week, just kind of, you know, hashing things out, rewriting some things, mm -hmm. writing new things. Um, we do have plans to tour eventually. Um, we've got a few local shows coming up and um, that's pretty much it. You know, I think this year we, we were just kind of trying to take our time and trying to get some stuff done that we should have done the last two years. But as I said, it was kind of a roller coaster. So we just played show after show after show and kind of built our name and made fans and friends and 
now we're kind of going back and trying to put in the footwork that we probably should have up until this point. So <laughs> where are you guys going to have shows? So right now, um, We've only been doing shows in um, Virginia and North Carolina because it's the closest thing to us because we don't have transportation right now. So if you guys want to help out with that, we have a Patreon. Um, we don't like to ask for help or money or anything like that. But, you know, we've had kind of a rough go at it. Our van kind of blew up. We went through some member changes. You know, we've had we've had a rough go at it, but we're still here. We're still trying. Um, we're doing local shows right now. When we get transportation, we're going to try and uh, – branch out and like I said tour is hopefully in our future so right now we're trying to go back and play some local shows because we didn't have a lot of time to do that in the past like two years so we're just trying to cover cover as much area as we possibly can right now let me know when you're in North Carolina I'm gonna try to come in absolutely um, I know that we are playing in Charlotte very soon uh, that that's 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 close enough for sure, for sure. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find a date for that because our it's kind of sporadic. Um, but yeah, we'll be in. Uh, I know our next show is in Roanoke, Virginia, so we're doing that. Um, then we have Charlotte is June third, so if you can make it, come get a hug and a shirt. Absolutely. Speaking of shirt merch, very important, guys. If you want to help up, up help. Help out a band get some merch. Um, rep them, show it off, and also the profits do help. Um, if you guys want to share your Patreon real quick, just in case, you never know. Um, so all of our socials are Dying Oath or Dying underscore Oath. So you can find us uh, on that. You can definitely go to our link tree, which is link tree backslash Dying Oath. That's got all of our socials there, so if you can't, you know, if you can't find it anywhere else, you can find it on LinkedIn. I'll be sharing. I'll be sharing the links later, so you guys don't worry. Uh, if you guys want to help out anyway, share, give them some love, and react. You know, all the good stuff to help the algorithm that Facebook just doesn't like to help us. We have to help each other. <laughs> Do you guys have any artistic collaborations in mind? Oh gosh, there are, there are so many collaborations that we would love to do. Um, it's kind of hard to pick because we have so many friends and so many people that we support and that support us. So, you know, we're pretty open to, to anything that fits. And, you know, um, some of us, I myself, actually do a, a lot of side uh, collaborations simply because there are a lot of things that don't fit with what we're doing or with what the other bands are doing or whatever. And so... I like to do um, a little bit of everything from like the blues to pop music to whatever you got. I'll do it. Punk rock. All the, the collaborations have been a wide array and actually Rhino and Josh have uh, helped me over the past year uh, get some of those collaborations done. So that's been fun. That's pretty cool. It's always fun to see the collaborations going. Um, there's so a lot of them coming up in the, in the world right now. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of people doing the interviews and everybody's like, well, I'm collaborating with this one. So it's going to be fun to see all those pop up at one point. For sure. <laughs> if anybody out there wants a collaboration, just hit me up. I'm I'm pretty open to anything. There you go. See, Anger Overdose, hmm? Mindy Jack. Absolutely. And thanks for listening to our music, Anger Overdose. That's awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, where do you guys find inspiration? life you guys like watch a movie or is it all like you know personal um i think a lot of it's very personal i know that when the guys you know write just the music that it it comes from a place in their heart from you know from where they've been and where they want to go and um i just kind of go in with nestor and try and translate that you know we just we write about real subjects of what's going on in the world and what's going on in our own lives, what's going on with our friends and families. And um, a lot of our past songs were written about um, situations in my life. And so um, they're all very real, but I think that it helps translate a lot. It helps people connect to that on a real level because it's, it's real subjects that people go through every day. So sometimes we kind of have to rip ourselves open and put our hearts on a platter. But I think that that's something that our fans connect with and that they enjoy about our music is that it, it's real. 
Uh, Sarah says, I would love to hear a collab with uh, Damon Heath. I think your voices would be amazing together. Hey, Sarah Tester, I love you. Thank you for um, getting on here and watching. I'll, I'll look into that. It's, uh, it's always nice to be able to, to put what you feel with you in, into your lyrics, into your, even into the music. I mean, if you're angry, you're going to play angry, right? So um, uh, sure. you're over those. He plays angry. <laughs> <There's>. <laughs> um, we're going to take a little moment to listen to your song, Ascension. That's your latest release, right? It is. Hope you guys enjoy it. It's a pretty, pretty amazing song. When we come back, we're going to talk about it.
powerful track. That was a Thank powerful you. song, powerful video. Um, you can see here from the comments. Uh, what's up, Good Pigeon? Uh, what's up, Rockstar Radio wants the track for their Heavy Metal Monday. What's up, Rockstar Radio? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Michael Scott says, what's up, guys? Much love. Hey, Michael. Sean. Wow. What a, what a song. I'm a little speechless. I'm a little, it's something that should be talked about. So I'm going to let you guys talk about it. Um, um, <laughs> not going to cry this time. I think I've talked about it enough, hopefully, <laughs> at this point that uh, I'll be okay to talk about it. Um, I wrote this song about um, pretty much a situation in my own life. Um, and the day that I wrote it was a really hard day uh, that Rhino actually helped me get through. And um, I just kind of went to band practice that day and just kind of put it all out on the line and it ended up making one of our, what I think is one of our best tracks. And so I just wanted to uh, kind of put that out there and let people know that it's okay to try and fight to get out of the situation that you're in if it's toxic or abusive. Absolutely. And it needs to be talked about. People have to do something before it's too late. Um, too many times it gets to be too late. And, Absolutely. Uh, and it could be your partner, it could be a family member, it could be anybody. Just try to get to somebody to talk to somebody and get out of there. For sure, for sure. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing the song with us. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you for listening. If it could, I always say, you know, when you do a song, if it could at least touch one person, if it can make something in somebody's head click, um, it's like you did your job, right? So, uh, Absolutely. It's kind of one of the things that we've always set out to do is to try and talk about things that most bands don't want to talk about. I, you know, I know it's such a stigma to want to talk about these subjects because um, oftentimes it'll turn people away from the band, but... Honestly, we've always kind of just been a band that wanted to fight for what's right and to help people regardless of what other people are thinking. I, I'm Somebody's got to do it. Uh, somebody's got to do that hard-hitting music and not vo just vocally and the, the, the lyrics have to hit. Uh, during um, Mental Health Week, we talked with Crimson Overtone. Christina, the lead singer, um, shared her story of uh, human trafficking. You can see that it relates into her songs, it relates into her music, and that's her way to heal, and that's her message to other people. It was Absolutely. a very healing episode, if you guys want to, whoever's watching this, if you guys want to catch it, it's on, on my Facebook page. I'll go back and watch that after this. Thank you for sharing that. It's the Thursday's episode, yeah. So, yes, um, that video is everywhere. That, well, that video is on YouTube. That song is everywhere on every streaming platform. So post it up, guys, and share it out. And uh, it's an important message. Let's, uh, let's share this one a little more than, you know, your common Britney Spears. Anger <laughs> over those. Leave Britney alone. <laughs> uh, when's your favorite time of day to create music? Oh, Usually for me, I think I come up with my, my best ideas like when I'm, I'm getting ready for bed. It's like when my brain starts to wind down and I start shutting out the rest of the world and I'm trying to go to sleep. It's usually one of those things where I roll over and write my journal because I'm, yeah, like Nestor said, like 3 a.m. Um, Nestor and I stayed up until 3 or 4 in the morning one time uh, writing lyrics for this um, song that we were working on at the time. And uh, I thought it turned out great. You know, it's it's kind of those times when you're not busy and, and your brain is just overwhelmed with all these things. It's kind of easier to unlock that and and sit and write it all down. Yeah, about 3 a.m., about when the world's quiet and you have all the silence in the world to yourself. Yeah, all the all the thoughts running wild. Right. But no other outside noise. Everything is quiet and you could just focus. Um as um, as a vocalist myself, um, we used to record. Well, I still record at home. Like this is my studio. <laughs> it's my bedroom. It's the corner of my bedroom, but that's the studio. <laughs> and um, it's it's like my vocals are warmed up more at like two or three a.m. in the morning. 
if I try to sing any time during the day, it's like I feel sluggish. I feel, and it's easier because the kids are all in bed. Yeah, I second all of this. We all have kids, so yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, do who inspires you as a musician, singer? That's a, a long list. Um, I think first and foremost, my mother, um, you know, she's kind of the one that got me into this. She wanted to be a vocalist and kind of gave it all up to raise me. So I kind of, uh, I mostly did this for her and then I ended up loving it and wanting to do it for the rest of my life. So, um, definitely her, but, um, I think that some of the leading ladies, you know, and some of the guys back in the day who kind of paved the way for, all of us to do what we're doing because metal wasn't a thing back then, you know, rock and roll was hardly a thing. So, you know, people like, um, Joan Jett, I know people get tired of me saying that, but you know, she kind of paved the way for women everywhere to be able to, to do rock and roll music. Um, definitely her and Pat Benatar were probably my, my, my biggest, um, inspirations. And Amy Lee is a amazing writer. Chester Bennington was a huge, huge inspiration to me as well. Um, Elvis, I don't know if any of you guys watched the, the Elvis movie, but the things that that guy went through, you know, poor dude, but you know, he made rock and roll well and alive. So I, I think there's, there's so many. And I think, um, every 10 to 20 years, we have somebody that's on a new frontier that's kind of pushing it a little more forward. So hopefully that'll, that'll be us one day being an inspiration to somebody else. It was a uh, Matt Tuck live at Brixton. I think it was like maybe seven, six, a long time. Uh, seeing Bullet perform on that stage there at Brixton Academy was it, it was one of the coolest things that made me really want to pick up guitar. Eventually adopted New Heroes, Zach Wild, um, Lexi Leo, uh, Jimi Hendrix. The name of a couple, uh, Randy Rhodes. I had I had a time with Randy Rhodes. That goes back with that Jackson guitar thing. Both Matt Tuck and Randy <laughs> Rhodes really influenced that for a long time. Uh, yeah, that that's probably about the peak of where I was at. That inspired me was those few guitarists. When you say that, like they're not like some of the most amazing guitarists ever. <laughs> oh Just yeah, them guys. Uh, Sean asks, what music bands do you look up to, listen to? I think uh, for the band as a whole, you know, like we, it's a lot of 2000s metalcore. That's kind of what we started out with. And that's what we're trying to bring back um, in a more modern way. So as a whole, I think that's probably the same for all of us across the board. Um, as an individual, I think all of us come from different backgrounds and like different types of music. Um, I'm, I'm more into like the blues and stuff like that. That's, that's more of what I like to just sit and jam to. But of course, when I'm getting pumped up for a show, I like to listen to a lot of metal. Um, Kitty's one of my favorite bands. I like to listen to Cold, Corn, stuff like that. Uh, new metal's kind of um, what what gets me ready. That's kind of where I came from and where I evolved from. So I would say new metal all the way. Rhino. Uh, Children of Bodom, Anti Flag, uh, very heavy punk rock uh, way back, skater days. Um, Good choice. Bullet from a Valentine. Um, I touched, uh, like you say, Cascade every time we touch. That was a banger. I used to play that. Like, I used to use guitar. guitar into that song. <laughs> That's your Yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> sometimes I drink a little and do share impressions. So um, I do love share, though, you know. Gotta love some share. Maybe maybe we can have an impression night. Supposedly I do a banger Britney Spears. So. Yes. <laughs> We're gonna have to get together and record this and do like a, a stitch video. <laughs> that would be amazing if we if, if I get to go to the show on June third, we yeah. You know, yes. We drink and then record that. <laughs> What's up, Danny? Hey Danny. Um, Anger says rip. Alexi. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah way children of Odom. Gold is heavily underrated. I agree with that as well. They also like anger overdose. Every, yes. Everybody likes you. Everybody. Yes. You're like. I love anger overdose. You're like a rock star, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Where does the growl come from? 
Like, did you have to practice it? Did you have to? I mean, I growled a little bit, but I sound like a baby lion. <laughs> Um, it kind of evolved. I mean, at first it wasn't, it wasn't that great. Don't get me wrong. It was pretty awful. I think when everybody starts out, it, it's, it's weird. It's uncomfortable. It's not, it doesn't sound good to be honest. Um, it's not something I ever really thought about doing. And, uh, my band that I was in before this, um, wanted to do a cover of, um, bodies by drowning pool. And they were like, oh, you're going to have to learn to scream. And it started out as a joke. And I was like, I, okay. And I tried and it was awful and it hurt my throat. And I was like, okay, I must not, I'm not doing this right. So I started talking to other vocalists and watching YouTube videos and stuff like that, trying to get pointers. And, um, it got a little better as I went, I learned to do it the correct way. And then I discovered, um, Melissa cross. Is that, and, a uh, that was, that was a game changer for me. Um, I did a few um, classes with her. I also do classes with uh, Janelle uh, from Conquer Divide. Um, if you guys want to check that out, she's an amazing, amazing vocalist. Um, I did vocal lessons with Mara Lysenko. If you guys don't know who she is, she studied under Melissa Cross, but she's also just a powerhouse. Um, I think she even may hold the record for like the longest growl that's held out. She's absolutely phenomenal. But learning from from ladies like that really kind of helped me find my place and what felt good and how I really actually needed to do things. So now it, it's sounding a little bit better than what it did before, I suppose. It doesn't sound terrible. Now it kind of sounds like a panther or a wildcat or something. I don't know. It's weird the noises I make now. Hi, Hi guys. I don't know where his mama went. Oh, oh I say hi, guys. Nice to have you. It's my little co-host. He's Howdy. adorable. I was hearing hi. him. I, I, I think he's here to get the the girls. But he's sick this weekend, so he's staying with mamas. Mm -hmm. Oh, poor baby. All right, you stay here. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's quite this all right. We all have kids. So. The chicken nugget code. Mm -hmm. Yes. Chicken nuggets. But right now I can't scream chicken nuggets because nobody's <laughs> there to hear me. <laughs> Matt wants to know, when you write the guitar riffs, do you just jam or sit down and write it? Uh, mostly jam. I'll sit in front of my computer. Josh will probably answer about the same uh, usually just sit in front of the recorder for a while and just be playing something, maybe be playing. Usually for me, I'll be playing my guitar regular, just playing something like a cover of something, uh, you know, just any random band like bullet or something. And then I'll suddenly feel like, huh, that don't sound right. Let me start jamming on something. Oh, on my own. We usually send it to where everybody can check it out. If we like it, we keep working on it. If we don't we just add it to something else. Yeah, that's usually how it happens. They'll send the, the music and then we're like, thumbs up, thumbs down. If it's a thumbs up, then we just start kind of breaking it down to find what works. Does it start with the guitar? Do you guys start with the drums? How does it start? It's always guitar. These two are like brainiacs, honestly. Like, I don't know where it comes from. I'm I'm not great at guitar, so I don't know. Like, they're both brilliant when it comes to, to writing riffs and knowing what sounds good and kind of what fits into what we're doing. And so, um, yes, you are killing it, by the way. You're awesome. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it always starts with guitar. They just kind of send ideas back and forth. And if we like it, then, you know, they always kind of have like a background drums that they start with just to kind of keep time. And so we'll start with guitar and then we usually add in actual drums so that it sounds right. And it's not just, you know, drums that are created. And then, um, then we move to bass and then to vocals. Vocals are always last because we don't want to start writing vocals. And then we decide we don't like something with the music and then we have to go back and change it. So we kind of just craft the entire song. And once it's done, then Nestor and I will sit down and try and figure out cleans first and then, um, all of the screams and where we're going to put harmonies and then the rest is just kind of where it ends up. That's really cool. <laughs> he's, he's very talkative. To think of so he's so cute. <laughs> you say hi. No, no. 
Are you no, sure? he wants chick nugs. Mm-hmm. What do you want? You want your monthly trucks? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. We're going to take a break and listen listen to their song, End of Days, and I'll go set you up with your monthly trucks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Monthly trucks. <laughs> yes. We're gonna monsty. set up this and go set up the kid with the monster trucks. Oh.
solid solid song guys like every song like and there's not even a surprise anymore you know that when you're playing some dying oath it's going to be something that's going to make you want to just hey, thank, you. <laughs> thank you what's this song about so that's kind of funny because um we had the music for the song and we didn't really know what we were going to do with it and I was supposed to be writing the song. It was one of the uh, early songs for me coming into the band to kind of show what I could do. And I'd fallen asleep on the couch and I was like taking a nap midday. And I had this like really apocalyptic dream. It was so vivid, like just fire coming through the trees and like just really crazy stuff. And I woke up and jotted it all down. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know what I can make of this. It was just kind of like, um, different ideas jumbled, you know, together. And I brought it to practice and I kind of listened to, you know, how the song was and kind of put it to the rhythm of how everything was and it didn't have a chorus. So I had everything done. We got the screams down through the verses and we really liked it. And um, Jasper, who was in the band before, sat down and kind of put this chorus together and we were kind of iffy about it. And then we put some harmonies behind it and it sounded really good. And we were like, okay, this sounds cool. And so we kind of made it about like selling your soul to the devil at the end of the world at, you know, end of times kind of thing. And it just worked out. It was just one of those songs that just kind of flowed onto the paper. It's really cool. How long does it take for you guys to make a video like this? Uh, it depends. Uh, that was a really cold ass day. Um, it was really cold, and so it kind of uh, slowed our time down a little bit. So I think that was like a, what, like a nine-hour day. It was like a full day of just shooting. And I think uh, Ascension took, I don't know, probably six or seven hours as well. Yeah, we really got to stop shooting in February. <laughs> yeah, both videos were cold. Both of them were cold, but End of Days is the definitely the coldest video we've ever shot. Boy. It's, uh, I, I mean, February is cold here. Um, I, I'm used to six feet of snow, so I'm, I'm still, like, this is, right now I am, like, boiling hot in North Carolina. I am <laughs> sweating, guys. I'm, yeah, it's warm in Virginia, too. I feel it. Have the AC on, and I'm still like, okay, can we turn another one on? Like, what can we do it here? You know, I, I'm used to my snow. There's still snow, I think, right now in Montreal. Yeah, I was gonna say you're Canadian, right? So I'm, I'm sure it's uh, pretty much cold most of the time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It, it doesn't get cold. You get maybe like one month of like summer, and then it just goes back to winter. And here it's like mother nature needs to take a chill pill because she's bipolar. And so like it's cold and then it's hot and then it's cold and then it's raining and then it's hot and then it's cold again. Just never Wake up in the morning, go outside and you're like, okay, it's cold. Put a sweatshirt on, you know, and you're burning up by noon. And then three hours later, you're like, well, I'm regretting my choices right now. I, yeah. I really am. Um, yeah. As he says, come to Orlando. Uh, oh, in, in Orlando, it's like one of those things where like you get out of the shower and you don't know if like it's just the water from being in the shower or if it's sweat because you're already hot. Like You don't dry. You just stay yeah. humid. It's yeah. muggy hot. I, I used to always go to Florida for um, vacation and it was just I had to stay indoors because I'm pale white. I get burnt easily and it's just so hot. I can't breathe. I feel that. Yeah. I remember going to Florida and only coming out at like seven o'clock at night because the sun was kind of down, still there, still burning me up, you know. 
Yeah. yeah. For us, for us pale ladies, it's a hard life. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse is, um, Jesse's asking, is there an album yet or just singles? Okay. So, you know, when we started out with, uh, COVID and all that, it was just easier for us to release singles because, um, try Texas. Oh no, you, you keep that Texas weather, man. Um, right. <laughs> it was easier to, to do singles because, you know, nobody was out and about. We didn't have a way to go out and kind of promote albums at the time. So singles were kind of where it's at. And that's kind of still where we're at. You know, I think, uh, with the music industry right now, it's, it's just easier and it gives you a lot more content to put out a single after a single instead of putting out an album. And then you've got like two years of work that you just put out and nothing else after that. So you're like, okay, we pro promoted it for a month. Now what do we do? You know, yes. you put it all out. Not to mention, you know, there'll be one or two songs that people really crank up and the rest of them kind of don't get to see the light of day. So we kind of like to put singles out because each one tells its own story and it gets its own limelight and we get to, you know, promote that for a couple of months and then find something else to do. Um, but I think that we are trying to work on an EP right now. So it's not going to be a full album, but we kind of want to give a, a package deal since it took so long to put a song out this last time. So I think we're going to give uh, probably two or three songs um, that are new and then two or three songs. I don't know if we're going to do any covers or if we're going to redo old songs or if we're going to write new songs. We don't really know, but we do have two or three songs in the works right now that we know for sure that we're going to put on there. And the other three are going to kind of be a mystery. So you're going to get new music either way. Um, but it is going to be a package deal. So it's not just going to be one single next time. So I think a lot of bands are going that way right now, instead of bullet pulling out like a 10 song album, they'll do a five song EP, six song EP. Uh, I mean, well, that way you can release two EPs a year instead of yeah, an album a that's, year. That's kind of the idea because, you know, it's kind of a double edged sword. It's like, um, labels and stuff like that. They kind of want full albums so they can promote that. But at the same time, like your fans and stuff, they don't really want full albums. They want singles. And it's being a musician, you're kind of screwed either way you go. So it's kind of uh, the template of what you want to do at the time and what's working on your skill and your time and your money and all those things. So right now, I think it's just best for us. We want to we want to release two or three songs at a time and just kind of give people something to, to hype about. Because, you know, doing one single at a time is cool and it gives us great content. But our fans have waited long enough, so it's time to to give them a little a little shiny package, and then after that, maybe we'll put out a single after a single, or maybe we'll put out a new album. I think it's really just kind of going to be us adapting to whatever is happening at the time. Uh, being a musician, you kind of have to adapt month to month, week to week, because the scale oh, yeah. is changing at all times. So, um, what may have been good in the beginning may not be good next week. So. I don't really know what's coming, but I do know that we're working on an EP right now. So it's always ev evolving. Like the game is so always changing. You got to be quick on your feet and ready to just turn on a dime. Uh, Jesse says, better question. How do I give you guys my money to support? <laughs> well, there are a lot of ways. Um, you can, of course, buy our merch at storefrontier.com backslash dying oath. If you want merch, you get something for your money. Or if you want to subscribe to our Patreon, you can subscribe with as little as $3 a month. And you get behind the scenes videos, uh, behind the scenes photos. Sometimes you get music before it drops, you get discounts. Uh, right now, if you join, I'm doing uh, free lyrics to anybody who has joined. So whatever song you want, I'm literally pulling a page out of my very own notebook, writing the lyrics down for you, signing it with whatever message you want and sending it for free just for you guys being the awesome fans. So if you want to join, uh, that's a way to help us every month and you can unsubscribe at any time, but we're using that money for more content, um, to help us get transportation, to put out more music, um, because you know, recording songs, recording videos, all of this takes money that most of us don't have. We have nine to five jobs like everybody else. We have children, we have families, you know, we're doing the best that we absolutely can and we love you guys and we want to put out as much content as we can. So we're not going to ask you for money. It just may take us a little longer to get there. But if you do want to help buy merch, come out to shows and subscribe to our Patreon. That's, you know, 
it's the least and the most that we we would ask for you guys to do. So thank just, you for asking that, Jesse. We appreciate it. Drop the link. Okay. Right. I will I will send it to you. It is on our link tree. So you can go to Linktree backslash dying oath. And that has our Spotify, our YouTube, our storefronts here, our Patreon, literally anything that you can think of to find us on, you can find it on Linktree backslash dying oath. And yeah. if you can't remember Jesse, just send me a message on Facebook or any of you guys. I'm open to chat and we can talk about how you can help. There you go. I just found it and put it in the chat for you guys. Thank um, you. It's my pleasure. Where does your mind go when you guys go in front of the audience? Like, where does, are you still there? Do you, I, I kind of glaze over and then I come back to reality and I'm like, oof, what happened? Um, do you guys focus or? I had my first experience of a blackout when we played Blue Ridge Rock Fest for the first time. Um, we uh, they we had this set up to where all of us went and looked at our drummer at the time. And uh, like when he started the music's when we would turn around and as uh, soon as that stage manager said go, uh, drums started. I turned around, hit my first note with guitar and then blacked because there was just so many people. It was a sea of people, and, like, just immediately it became, uh, like, to quote SpongeBob, fine dining and breathing, but with breathing <laughs> and play your guitar because everything else went blank. Yeah, it was kind of one of those things where, like, we had been used to playing for 100, 200 people max, and uh, we got um, a shot with Blue Ridge Rock Fest. Thank you to Blue Ridge Rock Fest, by the way, for giving us two years of – amazing experiences um but like you said we turned around and there's thousands of people more people than i've ever seen in in one setting for sure and uh i i wanted to turn back around and run and ryan just looks at me and he's like <laughs> no no you, you you gotta go babe i'm like okay um all right let's do this and I kind of had the, the same experience. It was just one of those things where like you prepare for months and it's over in like two seconds. It's like a wedding, you know, you prepare and prepare and then it's over in a flash and you're like, what just happened? Did I do that? Were we good? I, you know, but I think now it's just kind of one of those things where like, it's a second nature thing to us. Like we've played so many shows at this point where like, I think I, I joke about this a lot, but I think I kind of turn into a different monster because you know, when you step out on that stage, you kind of have to become what it is that you, you want to be, you know, everything that you've prepared for your whole life and you become this different entity. So it's like, I have split personalities, you know, you see me on stage and I'm, I'm, I'm breaking shit and screaming, at things. but you come over to the most people and I'm like, hi everybody. How are you? You know, or at least that's how it feels. And so people are just like, what, what are you? The, is that the same person? person like what's what's going on but I think it's just kind of one of those things where you block out the world and you just really go to a place where you can reach the depths of all the darkness in your soul and kind of portray it out with love it's a it's a weird mix of things but well like you said it is a, it is a different beast on stage and you know at the merch uh, I mean it when you get to meet the, the bands at the merch table it, it's when you can relate a little more to them is when you can talk to them and um, see if they're still humble for me it's important like you know to be approachable and to be like and you guys are very down to earth you're very uh, sweet people i, I can see <laughs> ryan over there just giving the heart to everybody and you know yeah. um, it's it's good quality to have like because you guys did blue ridge you guys did you know you guys did a big festival uh it, it would be easy, quotation marks here, um, for you guys to turn your nose up on the smaller bands, on the, you know. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with that. And I can see where, you know, some bands have resorted to that. You know, it's hard to keep a level head when you're out here doing all these great things that most people aren't able to do. You know, it's it's a gift. It really is. But honestly, I think that we can all agree that there's no way that we would we would be here that we could, you know, play music that we could do these shows if it wasn't for people like you that do media outlets that help us get our name out there and for these venues that give us shows and for the fans that are out here 
asking for our merch links and coming to our shows and showing up at the merch table just for a hug, you know, even if you don't buy anything, like we really take those things to heart. And those are the experiences more than the amount of money that we, we get paid. Like I couldn't tell you how much we get paid every show because I don't think any, but any of us are really worried about it, but I can tell you how many people I gave hugs to and how many kids let me sign their shirts and, and how many, you know, high fives I got from the audience and, you know, all these things, those are the things that we measure our success from. It's not, it's not how many people we played in front of or how much money we made, because I can tell you it's not a lot. And, you know, Blue Ridge was the most amount of people that we've played in front of. And I can't tell you how many that was because I have no idea, but I can tell you it was some of the best experiences of our life because people did want to come over and talk to us and ask about our backgrounds and give us hugs and, little girls were telling me that they wanted posters on their wall and like just these things that we're going to take with us to the grave, you know, things that make us want to continue doing this. It's, it's definitely not the money and it's definitely not the fame because none of that means anything to us. We didn't set out to do that. We wanted to play music with our friends and we wanted to change people's lives. And we've been blessed enough to do that. And we're not going to take that for granted at any point. And so I think that being pleasant and, being transparent and telling people how much you care about them and how much their support means to you is probably the biggest thing about being an artist, because if it wasn't for the artists that we loved treating us like that, then, you know, we wouldn't know the scale of how we should act. And I think it's important for us to help the bands that are younger than us and that are up and coming do the same thing and know how to act and know how to treat their fans because, there's no learning curve for this. It's really just you're thrown to the wolves and you do what you may. And so we want to help the smaller bands because at some point we're not going to be around. We have to pass the torch. It's just like the younger generation of anything in the United States or in the world even. Yeah. You know, we have to kind of show them how things are supposed to be. We want to inspire people and we want to motivate people to be better humans. And that's the way that it crosses the board. Rockstar Radio says, for the love of music. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the next generation music coming up. Uh, I mean, if it's anything um, like the the band I had the pleasure to talk to a few weeks ago, uh, they're called Beheading of the Queen. Um, 15, like 16, 17, and 20 years old, I think. That's the lineup. The drummer's 15 years old. And very professional, very uh, pleasant to talk to. And very educated like the, the the kids were amazing they blew they blew me away like for for the next generation coming up i mean i i hope that um they keep going in that you know like in that line of uh, uh looking up to bands like you guys you know very pleasant down to earth that takes the time to you know address pretty much everybody in here um, absolutely I, I could see rhino every time we're talking and i post the a comment he's leaning in to read it so yeah I think, you know some of us started out early you know i i was in my first band when i was 14 and so you know i've been doing this my whole life and i think it's important that we get kids interested in music a lot of times it's because they don't have enough money or they don't have programs at their school or they don't have you know a means to be able to do that and I think it's important that we help the youth or the music's going to die. And I don't think that anybody wants that. So it's important that we, we do treat the youth as, as important as you would any of us. You know, if your child wants to play guitar, find a way to help them play guitar. If they want to be vocalists, take them seriously and help them out. Like I was lucky enough to have a mom that, you know, went out and spent her last money just to be able to get me a guitar and to get me vocal lessons and to do all these things. If it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you guys. So it's super, super important for us to, to be able to pass the torch and to help those that people consider lower than us or younger than us or whatever the case may be. Well, my oldest here, um, she said a few years back, I want to learn guitar. We got her guitar. It's, That's awesome. It's on the wall here. She's not playing. Uh, and then she started school. She started music and she's into percussion. So I got her a drum set. <laughs> it's not complete. I'm still getting some pieces, but and but she's trying. 
if exactly yeah. we'll, we'll so not get her whatever she wants you know give it a try if you don't like it if it helped any at all my mom bought my first guitar when i was like five and it was a little acoustic guitar and i touched it like three or four times without ever actually learning anything and like i said up until my friend left his guitar behind and i started listening to rock and metal or more metal than rock i guess you could say did i actually want to like pick it up and play it and started looking up tabs and start playing it. yep yep well we were we were talking about mental health the the week of mental health that she uh, uh she was getting bullied at school and she talked to us about being homeschooled next year. Um, we're not going to refuse it, obviously. Um, now she's changed her mind because she wants to be in the marching band. So music is keeping her at school. Instead of being homeschooled and missing all the opportunities to socialize, all the being bullied is harsh, but she's a tough kid. And music is keeping her there. She she told us I don't want to I don't want to be homeschooled because if I'm homeschooled I can't do marching band. I can't keep going into music. She can, but she's having so much fun. So you, you see that music is important. Like you can't take music away from from the kids, especially not in school. Um, Absolutely. I don't know in the U.S. In Canada, I know that they're taking away a lot of the music programs. So the kids are not learning music in school. So they don't have that outlet. So how old is your daughter? 13. 13. So do me a favor. You tell her that if she needs somebody to talk to, that she can message me. Um, I went through similar things when I was younger. And um, it's it's always something that I like to do is try and talk to the youth. I've, I've gone and, and talked to um, a girls camp in Roanoke and a couple of other things where, you know, younger girls... Um, they need somebody to look up to and somebody to talk to them and motivate them to keep on the path that they're on. And if she needs somebody to talk to, just have her message me. I'd be happy to talk to her anytime. That that would be really awesome because, you know, for a while I was the cool grown up that she could talk to. But now I'm the just now your mom. Now I'm stepmom. You know, mm -hmm. like now it's like I live here. So it's like you're not cool anymore. <laughs> No, now the 10 year old thinks I'm like super cool because I have the podcast and the radio station. So she's like, wow, you're really cool. The 13 year old's like, mm. so maybe yes. So. Well, well I, can't, I can't say that I'm really that cool, but I I'm mean, you're a rock listener. star for her. You're going to be like, oh, wow, this rock star wants to talk to me. Like, this really cool Absolutely. girl wants to talk to me. So thank you very much, Mindy, for doing that for the kids. Okay. And, you know, it's important for them to have somebody positive to look up to. And, I agree. Uh, I mean, the bullying has to stop. Unfortunately, we can't make it stop. But if we can teach them how to deal with it and how to cope with everything, I think it's already a big step in, uh, you know, in the right direction. I absolutely agree. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, we're a band that likes to talk about important subjects because I think the only way that bullying is going to stop is if we as parents are teaching our children the right, the right ways of doing things so that they can teach other, other children to, to do the right things. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. Um, how would you guys define success as an artist? I think everybody kind of defines it, you know, differently. But for me, I think that I've already been successful. You know, I was lucky enough to be able to, to be able to tour and to see all these great places and to make fans and friends from all over the world that I never would have gotten a chance to do, to stand on stages with my peers that I looked up to as an artist, to be able to play the same show as my favorite band in existence, which is Kitty from Canada. Obviously, I know that you know that. Um, yes. But to be able to really check off all of my personal goals as an artist, I think is success to me. And I feel like I've already done that. So if I don't make another record, I don't make any more money. I don't play another show. I feel like I've already checked off all my boxes and the rest is just a plus. And so I feel very, very blessed to be standing where I'm at with, especially with the band that I'm, I'm in 
I don't think I could think of better people to play with. What about you, Rhino? What What is success for you? It's kind of hard to beat playing Blue Ridge. I mean, honestly, we're from a real small town and county out in Virginia, at the end of Virginia here, Southwest Virginia, that you don't really see like or hear a lot of metal bands that come out of the area that go on to do these things. Um, I mean, that's that's definitely a start. Uh, as to the what I see as success is so long as I keep enjoying doing what I'm doing, um, there, I, I guess the sky's the limit, really. There, there's real no goal to it. As long as I can have a better than that, all. Agreed. I mean, Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge is pretty, pretty fucking awesome. I agree. <laughs> you guys share the stage with like some big names, like some, some, some people that a lot of us in the comments would be like, wow, you know, like. So it's pretty yeah, it's surreal, honestly. Like you said, you know, there aren't even any music venues around here. So for us to be a band in general is a huge thing, but to be a band that actually gets to go out and, and play with our peers, you know, people that inspired us to be a band to begin with is just incredibly humbling to say the least. You know, if, if we never got to play another show ever, this is something that some people may not get to do their entire lives, you know, and as I said, I don't think it's something that we'll ever take for granted because we did come from nothing. We started out playing in a, a trailer where we didn't have power or running water you know, and it was just something that we thought was fun, that we loved, and we liked each other's company. And then we were able to play a couple of small shows around here, and we thought that was incredible. And then we were able to play regionally in other states, and we thought that was incredible. But playing Blue Ridge is just, it's indescribable, to be honest. And I think it's it's probably one of our highest honors and hopefully we get to, to go bigger than that. But if we don't, we're just thankful for all the opportunities that we've gotten so far. So I feel like we've been successful. There's, there's other festivals. Like you said, right now, you guys can't travel that much, you know, yeah. but once that situation is fixed, once you guys can travel, but even then you guys have nine to five jobs, you know? So how, how, how do you balance touring life, kids, you know, like that's that's I, I guess that's a completely new beast for you guys at that point when you get there. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. Don't get me wrong. And it's not just hard for us. It's it's hard for all artists, you know, even famous artists. It's it's very hard trying to find the balance of being able to give time to your relationships, your kids, your friendships, your band, your job. Um, it's very tiring. You know, there have been times where, you know, some of us have probably wanted to hang it up. There's been times where we felt like we couldn't keep going. There have been times when we spent more money on the band than we did eating, you know, and it's, it's really all just kind of been trying to get ready for our future because we want a better future for our kids. And whether it's at our nine to five jobs or playing music, hopefully, you know, praying it's, it's with music so that we can do what we want to do for the rest of our lives and be happy with that. But no matter what we get to do, just the fact that we get to play together once a week and get to play shows here and there is enough for us. But if we can tour and we can play more shows like Blue Ridge, then all of that's a plus and we'll take it for sure. What would be the ultimate festival to play or the ultimate location? Like, I would love to be able to sing in the Sydney, um, I can't remember the name now, but the uh, where they have the operas and everything. Yeah. I would love to see the acoustic over there. Like, that's that would be my all-time place that I would love to go sing at. That's definitely a goal for me, too. Um, that's, that's just an amazing place. Um, there are a few places I'd love to play, you know, obviously every band in the world wants to play Madison Square Garden because that's, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the big, big, that's the huge thing. I think Evanescence just played that uh, recently for the first time and they've been a band for how long? Like mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest goal for sure. 
Um, I've always wanted to play at Red Rocks out in Colorado. I've seen shows out there, and it's just chef's kiss. The, the acoustics out there are just legendary. Um, festivals for me, I'm a huge fan of uh, Louder Than Life. I, I've been to Louder Than Life, and it's just the setup, the people, you know, the location, everything out there is just amazing. Uh, that's a, a goal festival for me. But honestly, like I said, I'll play anywhere at any moment. If you want me to play at your kid's birthday party, I'll probably come. Yeah. Awesome. I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, download festival for me. Uh, the great big one. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's download. I, I may be wrong. It could be even Rock AM. It's in Germany. Uh, I don't want to like get it all wrong, mix it up. All I know oh, is Rock that, Rock Am Ring. Oh, Rock Am Ring. Yeah, that's yeah, giant that's tower. They go all the way back with screens and speakers, and it's just nothing but people forever going on. Yeah. And that just that's looks a like one. such a killer, like killer show. Ooh, Hellfest. We talked about Hellfest too. That's a huge metal fest. That would be absolutely, absolutely cool. Rock on the Range would be cool. Yeah, I would love to play at Rock on the Range. Any chance you guys are going to Louder Than Life this year? Yes, um, I actually already have my tickets. I try, I try to go oh. to um, either uh, Blue Ridge or Louder Than Life every single year. Um, was going to try to do both of those this year. I'm definitely going to Louder Than Life. So hit me up on yeah. Facebook if you want to hang out. Um, yeah. Last year, I had a bunch of Facebook friends there that. Uh, we're just hanging out. It's a cool place to have a beer with your Facebook friends. So, yeah, hit me up. We'll hang out, Sean. Festivals are always nice places to hang out and meet some new people. And, you know, for sure. I'm sure you have a lot of people that, you know, are pretty happy to see you there just hanging out and just, you know, being so, you guys are so like chill, so down to earth. It, it, it feels good to talk to people that have been to Blue Ridge, people that, you know, and are still like very like, you know, this is life. We're just happy. We just do what we like to do. Like, it, it's nice to see that uh, not everybody gets jaded at one point. Yeah, thank you. I think it's really easy to to be bitter and jaded in this in this type of work. You know, it's it's a hard it's a hard job. But I think when you love it as much as we do, it's it's really easy to to be nice about it too. <laughs> you know. For sure. Sean says, last year was my first year going. Love it. They're almost like Rockville. Can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to meet you, Sean. That's awesome. Uh, what's the best piece of advice a musician ever gave you? To not give up. You know, there's going to be there's going to be times where it, it gets so hard that you really start to ponder why you're still doing it. I think every musician in the history of ever has gone through that. And just when you feel like giving up, something big comes and motivates you more than ever before, and you keep going. Um, but, yeah, just to never give up. I know it's cliche, but practice as much as you can, play as much as you can, absorb as much as you can, because that's going to be super helpful if you ever decide to do this as a career. Um, I try to be a sponge and be as observant as possible. I try to go to as many concerts as possible and see how people do things and how things work behind the scenes and trying to do, you know, the back end stuff with our band and trying to learn the business side of things because, you know, we have to be our own stage hands and photographers and videographers and uh, social media people. Like we're a DIY band. We don't have a label backing us. We have management, but we just signed with management. So it's, you know, it's new to us. So we've been doing absolutely everything on our own. We got to Blue Ridge on our own. You know, we put out these singles on our own. And so it's it's hard. It gets to be hard. But if it's something that you really want more than anything, as much as we do, just don't give up no matter what. No matter if you're playing for one person or 1,000, do your best every time and just keep going. That's my best advice. Practice, practice, practice. That's all the guitarists can tell you to do practice, 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 take the advice of anyone that's been there, done that and uh, follow to a T as best as you can. Can't, you can't do it all. And that's fine. Everything is going to take time. 
That's great advice. I think uh, we were told one time, do it until you hate it and then do it some more. Absolutely. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. That's why I've, I've never became that good at playing guitar because I'm not constant on it. I, I can play four non-blondes. Uh, what's up? And uh, yeah, hey, that's, that's my big song. That's my big song. I leave the guitar playing to the other people. Uh, I just sit around the campfire with a drink and play four non blondes on repeat. Hey, <laughs> that's me. I do a lot of rhythm, but I'm not even that great at it. So I just make sure I'm singing over it so you can't tell the difference. <laughs> I just get my girlfriend to sing. It's even easy because even then three chords in my brain gets mixed up with the chords and the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, it's like your Go hands ahead, start it. doing what your voice is doing and then your voice tries to start following what your hands are doing and then that's a shit show because that's me. Oh. And then I stop oh, singing yeah. and I stop str strumming and I just look at everybody like, well, that, that, that was it. That was my best shot, guys. I yeah. gave it all I had. <laughs> um. Let's see. Let's see. We, we we went around a lot of subjects. We've listened to some two amazing songs. Um, you guys have shows coming up. Um, what month? June, we said in Charlotte. You guys starting your shows when in May? Yes. Um, actually, I have a full schedule here. I can tell you, actually, if you'd like to know. There you go. Go ahead. All right. So we have... May 13th, we're going to be at the Spot on Kirk in Roanoke, Virginia. June 3rd, we're going to be at the Milestone, uh, Milestone Club in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is, if you guys haven't been there, it's a very historical place that Nirvana and a ton of other bands have played. It's a really cool place. Go check it out. Um, at June 10th, we're going to be playing at Ampfest here in Withville. Um, we're going to be headlining with some of the best regional bands that are in the surrounding states. You can't miss it. It's 20 bands, bucks, huge festival. Come out and see us. And uh, I live just a minute from there. So if you decide to come, come pregame with us as always. Um, well, that's, that's, that's one, that's, that's one hell of a good price. 20 bucks, 20 bands. I mean, absolutely. you know, that, that's the music, not for the love of money. You know what I'm saying? Completely worth hitting up guys. <laughs> Um, July 8th, we're going to be at the Spot on Kirk uh, in Roanoke once again, but that's going to be a ladies' night. Uh, I think they're calling it the Goddess Night. Um, so it's going to be all female-fronted bands. You don't want to miss out on that. We're going to be with uh, Blackwater Drowning um, and Nailbite, and that's going to be that's going to be a huge deal for us because that's two of like our two of our favorite bands also. Um, and then July 15th, we're going to be at the Milk Parlor in Blacksburg, Virginia. And that's all we have so far. There are other things, other talks in the works for later on in the year. So just keep your eyes and ears open because uh, we have some incredible things planned as long as the stars align and we can get transportation. <laughs> well, that Patreon, that merch table, you know, you were saying earlier, like, it's okay if you guys don't buy merch. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push you guys to buy merch you know, you're drinking all night long. You're having a drink. You're ha that last five dollars that you were gonna spend on a drink. I'm sure you guys have stickers, cozies. We do. Grab that last five dollars and just grab a sticker. It helps the band, and you don't need that last drink. See, that last drink is not gonna make you feel good. You don't need it. Just grab a sticker. Awesome. I still rip them from the people. <laughs> Also, if you guys buy merch, we usually throw in some freebies. So if you buy a T-shirt, you'll get a wristband, a sticker, whatever you want, some free hugs. You know, I've been known to to help people out with drinks and things like that. So, you know, we just really enjoy your company. So merch is definitely a plus. But if you want to buy a shirt, come buy a shirt, get a hug. You guys are asked in Florida. We would love to play in Florida, Jesse, and there might actually be something in the works later on. So, you know, make sure you follow watching, follow yeah. them on all their social media um, and just keep interacting with them, guys. Keep that algorithm going. Keep them. The more you get the algorithm going, the more they're in the eyes of the public, the more they can get. And that goes for every band. Like I'm talking every band that you like. Uh, Absolutely. The best thing you can do is engage. 
Absolutely. We were just talking the other day on another podcast how, you know, we don't make a lot of money on uh, YouTube or Spotify or any of that. But if that's the least that you can do for us, it does help with our algorithms. It helps you know when we're going to be in your town. It helps us know where our fans are so that we can come to your to your town. Um, so, yeah, if you can follow the page for us, if you can just like our, our stuff, you know, go listen on Spotify, listen on YouTube. It may seem like we're not making money on that or that we're not benefiting, but it helps us on the back end more than you could ever know. So if the least you want to do is go down and like this post, then then do that. We're happy with that, too. We appreciate it. Scott says, come to Hooligans live in uh, Jacksonville. And um, we would love to. We were actually supposed to be playing there this weekend for the New Metal Fest. We were going to be playing with uh, Tantric and Crazy Town and Head PE. But unfortunately, our van kicked the bucket, and that's about a five, six-hour drive, I think, Rhino. Is that right? Somewhere in there for us. And so we were going to have to pay to rent a vehicle, which was going to be a couple thousand for the weekend and then hotel rooms and food and all of that stuff. And unfortunately we just didn't have the means to be able to do it. So um, still go out please and support that show because waking Tara and a ton of uh, head trip trauma, a ton of other bands that are near and dear to our hearts. Um, some local and regional bands that we love that have supported us greatly as well as uh, Johnny Nethercut, who has given us some really great opportunities. Please still go out and check out that show because even though we're not there, we did help sell tickets. We do want to help encourage you guys to still buy tickets. It's going to be a phenomenal show if you like 90s and 2000s Zoom metal and if you like, you know, regional um, and local metal. So please go out this weekend and check out that show in Jacksonville, North Carolina at Hooligans. Definitely support your local bands. I mean, Absolutely. I think it's very important. That's that's what we're trying to push here uh, with the podcast and everything. Uh, try to support the indie community, the the, the 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 little guys, the you know, the people that do all the work. <laughs> uh, it's incredible yeah. to see how much work uh, an indie band can put behind. Like you said, social media, uh, finding shows, booking. Now you have management, but before you didn't have management. You took care of everything. Yeah, we even record our own music, so, yeah. See, that that's what I'm saying. Like, is, so the the money is going straight into shows, is going straight into, if you, if you guys are ever around here, I'm in Lincolnton, North Carolina. Just hit me up and come have a, come have a drink around the fire and, you know. Thank you for that, Melanie. We appreciate that. You're now part of the Downtown family, so thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure to add you guys and keep keep contact with you guys. Uh, I want to see where you guys. I want to see where you guys evolve to. I, I I have really good feelings for you guys. Like some really good stuff coming your way. Thank you. We definitely appreciate it, and I definitely feel the same about you. Like I wanna I wanna keep in touch and um, be able to see where you end up. You know, because. Even if we become famous bands or whatever, we'd still like to come back and, and talk to you about what we have going on because you helped get us to where we're going. So thank you for the support and for having us on the show. You know, it's been yeah. lovely. You're a lovely lady. You guys want to come in. We do special episodes. We did Mental Health Week. You know, we're going to do a bunch of other ones. So anytime you guys want to come up, I'd love to see you guys. We're in season one right, right now, maybe in season three, which would be towards the end of the year. So that way we'd sure. see where you guys are heading to and what happened, the release of your EP maybe. Most definitely. Yeah, definitely hit us up anytime. Um, I'm always free to to do any types of interviews, podcasts, whatever. I will always make time for you because you made time for me. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Anger Overdose said, love this community and the engagement. Absolutely. Sure. Little guys with talent turn into freaking titans. We hope so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we support them from day one. Zombie man, I appreciate you. She is a goddess, absolutely, for sure. Um, I, We're coming towards the end of the podcast. Uh, do you guys have anything you want to say to your fans? Because obviously they've been here since the beginning. Um, yeah, um, just 
I know it's cliche, but we absolutely adore you. We love you. Thank you. Every opportunity that we've ever gotten, every show we've ever played, every interview that we've ever been on, everything that we do is for you. Thank you. It's because of you. We couldn't do it without you. We wouldn't want to do it without you. We literally have the best fans on the planet. You guys have helped us win competitions. You've helped keep food in our stomachs. You've donated money so that we could get from place to place. You've bought our merch. You've watched from day one and none of you have gone anywhere. And we really appreciate that. We love you so, so much. And we definitely want to thank, you know, not only our fans, but the venues that have hosted us and to every single media outlet that is either playing our music or hosting us on uh, podcasts such as yourself. So thank you to you as well for having us out here because nobody's going to know who we are if it isn't for you. So thank you. I mean, thank you for taking the invitation. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Anything you want to add, Rhino? I couldn't have said that better myself. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Oh. Chris is saying, I'm super late, was on the bike. See you tomorrow, Mindy, Jackson, and family. Love you, Chris. Um, Chris actually is one of our fans that have helped us through so much. I mean, he has no idea what he has meant to us and how much he's helped us out. But thank you, Chris. Thank you to all the people that have donated to help us. And just thank you to everybody. You know, we love you guys. We really do. I can't say that enough. Thank you. As we go out, I'm going to leave the link here in case you guys want to catch that link. They have everything on there. Um, there's social media, the Twitter, um, everything that the store is on there. So if you guys want to grab some merch, go ahead. Speaking of merch, let me do a little. There's the Anger Overdose new merch that's just, just, just came out for the release of 1999 coming out on the 28th. Got to give a shout out to my little zombie man here. Um, he's such a cheerleader for me. <laughs> he's, uh, he's amazing. He's, uh, the support is incredible from everybody. Yeah, he's awesome. Mike says, hey, I'll play your music for you. Uh, Mike Stoker is an amazing person. Um, please do send your tracks over to Mike. Uh, he has a show with my radio station, and he has a show with the radio station. Yeah, I've checked out his stuff. I actually really, really enjoy what you're doing over there, Mike. Thank you. I'll send it over to you. I appreciate it. Send that, send that, the, the ascension to Mike. For sure, he'll be adding it in the next playlist. I'm pretty sure about it. <laughs> yes, I, I have it. the Nixus question. I call it that because I finish every interview with that one question. Okay. If you had a chance to sit down with your younger self, what advice would you give yourself? There's no bad advice. We went from don't drink that much to it's going to be okay. So there's no bad advice. We went all over the place with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, honestly, it would be, you know, to not take things so seriously, to not take things so hard. You know, I've spent a lot of my life over analyzing everything and being depressed about everything and thinking that things were not going to be okay, as you said, and trying to figure things out. But I think that uh, if I had a chance to sit down with myself, I would say, take your time. You know, all good things come in time and you're going to get there. You're going to get there, girl. Just, just keep it moving. Don't give up. Um, this the simpler things in life will keep you happier. Try same, same as she would say to herself, I would say to myself that, that all the stress that you have dealt with will mean nothing once you're older. And yeah, you, you enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. You enjoy your life. That's some very good advice. Very good advice. I always say um, the idea you have is not stupid. That's true. Do it. None of us thought we would be here, did we? No. <laughs> no. I started this podcast in January thinking I'll have one interview a month. We're down to two to three interviews a week right now. So you never know where your dumb quotation mark idea can bring you in such a short time. Yeah, so I didn't tell you this before, but I had uh, 
I had come across what you're doing as well as the Stoverload. And uh, I kind of stay on people's socials and see what people are doing, especially when it comes to podcasts and stuff like that, because you never know. And um, I had actually been following what you were doing before then and was kind of a fan. And so um, I had watched a couple of your episodes uh, way before you'd even asked. And then you asked and I was kind of stoked about it. I was like, all right, yeah, this is cool. I really enjoy what she's doing. So I'd, I'd love to go on and, and chat with her and you know see what she's doing. But I was a follower before and I will be a follower after. I definitely want to see you succeed. I think that what you're doing is great. And I hope that you get everything that you wanted. I appreciate that. I, I really do. Uh, I'm doing this and I'm doing this out of pure love for uh, the indie community. Uh, I was in a band called Crossover for three years throughout uh, COVID. And um, I mean, we separated ways. I'm doing this and he's doing um, another project right now and he's doing something else. Um, but that gave me the love of the indie community to see how much work we put in. Mm -hmm. Then I understood you guys and every artist that's in here. And uh, Mike Stover was actually one of my first podcast interviews. He interviewed me. So it, it's always nice to see that we're going full circle. Uh, that's why it's so important for everybody to work together because what we're doing is going to help you and what you're doing is helping us and so on and so forth. And it takes an entire community for everybody to succeed. So, Absolutely. I, I have my whole village. Um, Matt is my audio engineer for the podcast. Uh, this is our Discord link. Um, awesome. I have so Manda, who's, uh, Manda does everything for me. She keeps me sane. Britt's my assistant. I have Ames, who's the outreach, outreach manager. I'm not sure who reached out to you guys. Uh, I don't know if it's Matt first or Amy first. I have people reaching out to a bunch of bands and they love what they're doing. And I, I love seeing them. I, I love waking up in the morning, going in that chat and everybody's excited. Everybody was excited for tonight. Um, Ames wanted to be there, but she's in the UK. So it's probably like three o'clock in the morning right now for her. She'll catch well, this. Sending tomorrow. our love to her in the UK. But I appreciate that you guys came in here um, to talk, to give us a bit of an insight in, in the, the way you guys work and the band, um, your amazing music. I mean, keep keep up the good work, guys. I will definitely stay in touch. Uh, Mindy, I will send you uh, a request and uh, we will see you guys back because I know you guys are, I know you guys are in for some good stuff and I want to. I want to follow you guys and I want to see where you guys are heading. Thank you. Same to you, love. We appreciate it. It's been lovely. Thank you. So thank guys, you. thank you for being here. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, we appreciate you guys. Thank you for the follows. Keep, 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 keep following these guys. Keep, uh, let, let's see you guys at the show. Whoever can make June 3rd, let's make it happen and let's all hang out there. Let's go yeah. to the dying oath. Thank you again, guys, for being on the show. Thanks. Uh, Jesse says, love y'all. Love you, Our too. Overdose. Let's go. Thank you. Love you all. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.